In this video, we'll explore it returns to scale. While you're watching this tutorial, you should develop a better understanding of the economic concept returns to scale. To start this discussion, we should first consider how we measure returns to scale. We need to consider the relationship between our production inputs and our production output. In this case, we are making cars. The production inputs include labor, some machinery, and a factory. To simplify, we'll use these numbers. In this tutorial, the images represent a specific quantity. Each machine image represents 500 units, and each labor image represents 1,000 workers. The factory only represents one factory. Each car image represents 1,000 cars. This is the output generated from the previous inputs. 1,000 workers, 500 machines, and one factory. When we discuss returns to scale, we look at three specific stages, increasing, constant, and decreasing returns to scale. Let's break down each stage with some numbers. First up, increasing returns to scale. Increasing returns to scale means that as the production inputs are increased, the percentage increase in output is greater. For example, here the increase in the factors of production is 100%. The factors of production have doubled, but output has tripled. There's an increase in output of 200%. In this case, there are increasing returns to scale. We will consider the economies of scale that cause this to happen in a later video. Next, we'll look at constant returns to scale. From our previous point, we have doubled the production inputs, which means there has been an increase of 100%. Production output has also increased by 100%. Since there is an equivalent percentage increase in production inputs and output, constant returns to scale have been achieved. Next up, decreasing returns to scale. The change in production inputs from the point of constant returns has been increased by 25%. However, only 1,000 additional cars have been produced, indicating that the increase in output is positive 16.7%. Since the percentage increase in production inputs is greater than the percentage increase in production output, the firm is now experiencing decreasing returns to scale. In this tutorial, we've explored how a firm experiences varying returns to scale. We've seen how the percentage changes in inputs and outputs determine whether returns are increasing, decreasing, or constant. In the following videos, we'll explore exactly why returns vary as firms increase the size of their operations. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below or email me at enhancedtuition at gmail.com. That's us done for now, and I will see you in the next one.